Good evening, friends. On this night, we enter into the three holy and great days of Easter. We began our Holy Week on Palm Sunday just a few days ago when we celebrated Jesus' entry into Jerusalem and prepared for his passion. These three great days we now enter, Maundy or Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter, lead us through the sacred moments of Jesus' final days that have been marked by Christians for centuries and centuries. Tonight, we start a three-day walk to the empty tomb. This three-day worship experience begins with a meal as everything should. Jesus, having loved his own who were in the world, loved them to the end and sat down to dinner with them one last time. In this time of physical distancing, our Monday Thursday can't look like it has in years past. Here I am again in the St. Anne's side yard by myself, trying to stay out of the wind. How I wish we could all gather for a meal together. One, because I love you all, and two, because y'all can cook. I loved Maundy Thursday at St. Anne's last year, my first with you. Many of us gathering for a simple meal and fellowship as part of our commemoration. And I hope we can do that in years to come. Our celebration this year is simpler, starker. Perhaps we can look for a gift in that simplicity. Perhaps we can allow it to drive home the stories we remember tonight. Perhaps we can let the strangeness of this all wash over us, as the strangeness of that night with Jesus certainly washed over the disciples. Perhaps this evening can make us more reflective, more aware of the gift of community. As you have a simple meal at home, you remember Jesus celebrating what was probably a simple meal with his friends. Jesus, though, knowing that it would be his last evening with them, made it an evening they would remember. Two events are remembered on that evening. In one telling, Jesus got up from the table, got down on his knees, and washed the feet of his disciples. The master, the rabbi, the leader, served those he was leading. The Lord of all, down on his knees, washing feet. Holy Thursday asks us to remember this and to do the same, to lead by serving, to lead in humility. The second event that is remembered is the meal itself. Jesus looks at the simple elements of bread and wine and tells the disciples, this is my body, this is my blood. Eat and drink these in memory of me. And the disciples do. And they tell their friends, who tell their friends, who tell their friends, who form the church together, and this simple meal becomes Holy Communion, the Mass, the Divine Liturgy, the Holy Eucharist. Still to this day, we gather around the table of God and receive Jesus in the bread and the wine. We commune with him and with one another. We become one with him and he and us, and we all together become the body of Christ. We move deeper into a mystery of our faith, spiritual and yes, even bodily union with our God in simple bread and simple wine. What we do tonight, agape meals in our own homes, are in one sense, not a Eucharist, properly understood. In Anglican theology, we can only have a Eucharist when priest and people are gathered together in one place. And so we won't have a Eucharist until we are all back together in our church again. But in another sense, this is Holy Communion. Though we are many in our separate homes, we become one tonight as we remember the stories of our faith, as we touch these simple elements of bread and wine, and as we remember the life of our Jesus, and as we recall the untold millions that we join with in these simple acts of recollection, of remembrance. Even if you do this alone tonight, know that you dine with the great cloud of witnesses. 
with your St. Anne's family, and yes, even with Christ himself. So before we bless the bread and the wine, two quick programming notes. I'm gonna keep the camera on the bread and wine for a few minutes after the blessings. We're hoping to put a track underneath of some of our choir members singing, Oh Lord, hear our prayer, something you're all familiar with. I hope you'll sing along at home. Part of our blessing this evening will be in song. Also, it is the custom in many places, including St. Anne's, to reserve bread and wine on Maundy Thursday, to put it in a special place, and to keep watch with it as a way of keeping watch with Jesus in the garden. Tonight, we're gonna to have a virtual watch on Facebook Live from 7 to 10 p.m. Nothing will happen except that I will turn the camera on the bread and the wine, and it will be broadcast for three hours on Facebook. This is a way for us to keep watch in our own homes. So turn it on maybe for five minutes, maybe for an hour, maybe for 15 minutes, stop and sit with Jesus, symbolized in bread and wine. I invite you to join me. And now for the blessing. So if you're in your home, I hope you'll grab your cup of wine or your bottle of wine and pick it up as we pray together. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe. You created the fruit of the vine, and on this night you have refreshed us with the cup of salvation in the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Glory to you forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe. You bring forth bread from the earth, and on this night you have given us the bread of life in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ. As grain scattered upon the earth is gathered into one loaf, so gather your church in every place into the kingdom of your Son. To you be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. You'll hold out your hands like this or over your whole table of food. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe. You have blessed the earth to bring forth food to satisfy our hunger. Let this food strengthen us in the fast that is before us, that following our Savior in the way of the cross, we may come to the joy of his resurrection. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen.